again, back to this uh, total P25 is not uh, uh, related to fast rate rock reactivity. The fast rate sources with very high P25, normally more than 35%, are igneous rock and very low in reactivity and economic effectiveness due to low company fast rate substitution. But some sedimentary fast rate rock can also be low in reactivity and economic uh, effectiveness. In other words, total P25 is nothing related to the rock's reactivity. You can have a sedimentary, can be high to low. But the igneous fast, igneous fast rate rock normally is very low, very low. And give you an example, this rock from Canada called Ontario. It's the igneous rock, 30, almost 38% total P25. They are being in market in uh, uh, North America for organic farming. You know, fast rate rock is considered organic fertilizer. This is very interesting, even though appetite is inorganic compound, but it's organic fertilizer because nature, you know, is a natural pathway. The trade name, they even say volcano fast. Our rock is hard as volcano ash, volcano ash, you know. And farmers say, wow, 38% must be good, the higher the P2O5. But turning out, this is basically like a cement, really hard rock, really volcano rock. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, farmers are not aware of that. So I'll tell you that uh, total P25 don't look ever about. You can have uh, uh, this 20% and 29% have nothing to do with uh, rock's reactivity. The solubility is so important for the crop response. This one shows the crop yield, the grass versus the neutral ammonium citrate. You can see that uh, it's not linear, but at least it's uh, correlated quite well. Therefore, to market the phosphate rock, Total PDO5, of course, uh, relates to the transportation cost, but the economic effectiveness deal with the solubility. And the solubility is so important that uh, you have to label the solubility, and therefore solubility measurement is very important. And total PDO5, all the labs should come out the same because total digestion, but the solubility is rather difficult. Uh, there are three methods, neutral ammonium citrate in the United States, this is uh, 65, AOAC methods, 2% citric acid at the room temperature and uh, also one gram per 100 mil, normally in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Latin America. 2% formic acid is normally in e EU. Now, this one I want to mention is at IFDC, all the phosphate rock samples must be finely ground to be standardized to 0.15 millimeter or minus 100 mesh for solubility measurement in order to compare different sources of phosphate rock because the texture the particle size of phosphate rock can affect your solubility measurement. I'll give you one example here. Uh, effect of particle size on solubility and agronomic effectiveness. In here you have a GAFSA, highly reactive, and ground as received, commercial grade. If you measure the neutral ammonium citrate of this product, kind of low because it's an unground cost texture, 4.0. You GAFSA finally ground it, you got 6.8 particle size. Jordan, this is all commercial grade. I don't know the new Jordan now still finding ground or not, but uh, this is over 20 years ago. The neutral ammonium is 5.7, which is higher than uh, 4.0 here for the uh, unground gaps are rock. But if you look at the uh, crop response, this is for upland rice, this is for Bacchiella grass, you can see that the unground gaps are as good as Jordan, basically the three about the same. But if you look at the Bacchiella grass, Actually, Jordan rock performed poor than unground Gafsa rock. And unground Gafsa rock performed as good as finely ground Gafsa rock, also for the upturn rise. So basically, if you look at it, uh, this solubility 5.7, you will expect a higher crop yield. But 5.7 versus 4.0, they produce the same for upturn rise and even better for the highly uh, reactive unground gaps are rock. That's because the grinding of highly reactive rock does not affect the economic effectiveness. This example was done in Indonesia with the uh, maize. Uh, compare the TSP, ground North Carolina rock, and unground North Carolina rock back to uh, the pH 5.2, back to 1988. And you can see that ground and unground of highly reactive North Carolina rock and TS3, they are all performed more or less the same, even though the yield is kind of low, but they are the same. So for the highly reactive phosphate rock, you don't have to find a ground. But the solubility is much more sensitive 
will be sensitive to the particle size of phosphate rock. Now, this another thing I want to mention, because very important for Malaysia, is some factors affecting the PR sort of BD measurement. One is the type of shaking. Everybody used the AOAC method, one gram per 100 mil. But you know that the types of shaking apparatus can affect your solubility. How many types of apparatus? IPC used the horizontal shaker. The risk action shaker by some, some, some countries. Magnetic stirring uh, bar, you know, the stirring bar in the flask by Jordan. Orbital shakers by UK, Tunisia, AR in Malaysia here, etc. So you can see a different shaker. Even you use the one gram per 100 mil. PR ratio can be one gram per 100 mil. That's the AOAC method. But you have 2.5 and 200 mil, that's AAR. It's also ratio is one to 100. Sometimes in, in, in the past, AR used to five gram and 500. Would this affect your solubility? We don't know unless you check it, compare it. But that's another variable. This shaking speed, even the same shaker, ITC, I did this uh, a horizontal shaker for North Carolina rock, on ground and finally ground. I used 100 oscillation per minute, 120, 140. If you see the on ground, it increased 3.1 to 8.7 in the 2% uh, citric acid. But for the finite ground, little change. So even the type of, same type of shaker, but different shaking speed can affect your solubility. That's my point. And in Malaysia, I found it that we, uh, at comparison, say uh, this, you have a different particle size. This is provided by uh, Mr. Koga Chu just this year, showing Christmas Island, the particle size in this range. And if you look at Egypt and then Biova, look at the final fraction, it's about 55 here. It's a majority, a bulk, major bulk of the particle size in this range, very little. And then for Egypt and Christ Egypt, you got a uh, low amount of, uh, in the uh, coarse texture, the, uh, the Egyptians kind of coarse texture. Uh, Christmas Island depends on the grinding or not. But Biova, you see that all pass through uh, certified mesh. It's only two to six percent and majorities in this region. So different particle size. And then you want to measure the uh, 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 solubility. That could be a problematic for the, uh, so the, here's one example. This is comparison with IFTC and AAR. Please look at carefully because it's uh, very complicated. One is the Biova. Put the one and two. One is IFTC, the sample I had, over 20 year old Biova phosphate rock, 20 years ago. Uh, the two is current phosphate rock of Biova being used by uh, AAR. So for the total P205, they are more or less the same, you know, 30.9, 29.4, the close, you know, but in 20 years span. The solubilities for 2% citric acid, we, I measured about 15.1, and uh, AR is about 13.5. Close, but not identical, but they use different uh, apparatus, different ratio, and so on. Could be another factor. Uh, but this tells you that uh, by over 20 years ago, the sample, I got a total PD of about 30.9. 29.4 means the biova fossil are kind of uniform 20 years ago and 20 years later. Now, for the Egypt, Egyptian rock is current, current Egyptian rock. Uh, this is the particle size distribution. I measured total P25, 29.3. AAR used the Egyptian rock in Malaysia here, 25, about 26%. That's a gap of 3 to 4%. It tells you the quality of Egyptian rock may differ. The sample we got in Alabama, the sample you got in uh, Colombo may not be the same. Solubility, we got 11.8 and uh, AR got only 7.0. That in part, of course, is different procedures used, but it could well be the different Egyptian phosphate rock sample in Malaysia and in Alabama. So that tells you the uh, phosphate rock uh, uh, solubility measurement is very complicated. And uh, needs to be, uh, this is one I recommend that for Malaysia researchers and government officials to standardize the solubility measurement of fossil rock in Malaysia. This is my recommendation. Number one is the standardized finely ground fossil rock. Finely ground all the fossil rock down to 100 mesh. So from all the commercial grade fossil rock, even 
and ground cross-textual finite ground, like IFDC. So you standardize the finite ground particle size for comparison. And also, if you use the finite ground, you weigh one gram. This one is one gram per 100 mil. It's easy to weigh one gram of finite ground sample. If the cost texture, you want to get one gram, you may get one gram of calcite or quartz or some other things, and you got to mess up the result. But finite ground, you can get even just one gram and 100 mil. Standardize the ratio instead of 2.5, 250, 5 gram, 500, and so on. Uh, approximate should be reproducible so the data of the same phosphate rock sample should be obtained from different laboratories regardless of different types of shaker, shaking speed, etc. to be used. In other words, cross-checking should be about the same from labs to different labs. The other thing is that SRIM can mandate the same types of shaker, apparatus, etc. by all the labs. This is another option. So everybody use the same equipment, same speed, and same temperature, and so on. And finally, representative phosphate rock should be collected from phosphate rock users from time to time to ensure the consistent quality in terms of total pedophile and solubility of phosphate rock products as claimed by the phosphate rock producers or the local suppliers. Enforcement of the legislation must be required. So this is my recommendation. In 1998, I made some recommendation, but this is further recommendation to standardize the solubility of phosphorus because it's so important. 